uh, you know, limiting uh, the, the limiting votes to, to, I don't think limiting the vote matters. 90% of Americans, indeed, no, 95% of Americans, at least, if not 99% of Americans, are collectivists, or at least in their politics are collectivists. How many Americans support the, the, the phasing out of Social Security or the phasing out of Medicare or the phasing out of Medicaid? How many Americans support the phasing out of the welfare state? None. The numbers don't register on a meter. Those, those Americans, Americans, not immigrants, not Chinese, not Guatemalans, Americans are responsible for the state of America today. Not the left, not the right, Americans. Because the right has done nothing to shrink the welfare state. The right has done nothing to advocate for entitlement reform or, or phasing out. The right has done nothing to promote liberty and freedom in the United States. Where is the right? Where is the right under Eisenhower in rolling back FDR's uh, New Deal? Where was the right under Nixon and Reagan in rolling back the Johnson administration's Great Society? Where was the right under Bush in rolling back all the regulations? They weren't there. Where is the right today under Trump in privatizing Medicare and privatizing our health care system and doing it with Obamacare? They're not there. So it's not like the right is going to get our government back on track. It's not like voting Republican is going to get the government right on track. Indeed, the only Republican, the only Republican I know that actually stood for principles that are American principles when it comes at least to domestic policies, I have disagreements with him on foreign policy, but on domestic policies, just resigned and left the Republican Party today, Justin Amash. He is the only Republican I've grown to have any respect for because he stood by the principles of this country, he stood by the principles of the Declaration of Independence, he stood by the principles of the role of government as limited to protecting individual rights. And what did he get for that? He got for that harassment from the President of the United States and the whole Republican infrastructure, the whole Republican leadership. That was his reward. And good to Justin Amash for leaving the Republican Party today. I sub, that's a great, that was the one, the one good thing that, that, that you know I can point to in politics today on, on this uh, on this uh, 4th of July July uh, Amesh left the GOP is his political career finished or can he realistically win as an independent I think his career political career is finished I think that's sad it's what I said before the, the number of people in this country who respect the principles on which this country was founded the number of people in this country who really want to see the federal uh, spending, uh, uh, decreased the, the powers of the presidency, reduced uh, the power of government over our life and our economy, shrunk the power of all of the, 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 the number of people who want any of that. The, power, the number of people who want any of that is small, and I don't think Amash can rally enough people to win in his district and win an election. Uh, unfortunately, I think one of the tragedies will be if uh, Justin Amash goes and runs uh, for president or something under the Libertarian Party. I hope he runs under as an independent, but I fear that he'll run as a Libertarian um, and, and give too much credit to that pathetic political party. So I have much too much respect now for Justin Amash than to associate him with the, with the Libertarian political party. So I hope he doesn't do that, but I suspect that he will, and that is, uh, that is, uh, that is kind of sad. Uh, and while such a policy is reprehensible, there is something much more reprehensible. The policy of the so-called conservatives who believe in compromise and who are trying to defend freedom by stealth. If the liberals are afraid to identify their program by its proper name, if they advocate every specific step, measure, policy, and principle of statism, but squirm and twist themselves into semantic pretzels with such euphemisms as the welfare state, the New Deal, the New Frontier, they still preserve a semblance of logic, if not of morality. It is the logic of a con man who cannot afford to let his victims discover his purpose. Besides, most liberals are afraid to let themselves discover that what they, that what they advocate is statism. They do not want to know or to admit that they are the champions of dictatorship and slavery. So they evade the issue for fear of discovering that their goal is evil. 
immoral as this might be, what is one to think of men who evade the issue for fear of discovering that their goal is good? What is the moral stature of those who are afraid to know or to proclaim that they are the champions of freedom? What is the courage and the integrity of those who outdo their enemies in smearing, misrepresenting, spitting at and apologizing for their own ideals? What is the rationality of those who expect to trick people into freedom, cheat them into justice, pull them into progress, con them into preserving their rights, and, while indoctrinating them with statism, put one over on, on them and let them wake up in a perfect capitalist society some morning. Such, unfortunately, are a great many of today's conservatives. Gentlemen, if you want to save capitalism, there is only one type of argument that you should adopt the only one that has ever won in any moral issue, the argument from self-esteem. Check your premises, convince yourself of the rightness of your cause, then fight for capitalism with full moral certainty. 